So today we're gonna make an accordion with tabs or flaps. And we're gonna include laminated board covers onto our accordion. Um, the things that you're gonna need are uh, three pieces of cardstock for the cover. There are one, two, three, four, by six pieces of cardstock for the body of the book. And those can be in any color you like. You'll also need um, some PVA glue, your half inch glue brush. You can use your one inch glue brush as well. A bone folder, your knife, a pencil your ruler, and you will also need some scrap paper in assorted sizes. So I have a um, newsprint here, um, some bigger sheets for gluing the cover, and some smaller sheets in case I need extra, and these are gonna be for gluing the interior sheets of the book. We're gonna start with the covers. So I'm gonna clear my work area. Because this is our first time gluing, um, I'm gonna show you how to glue properly. And anytime you glue anything, you just need to make sure that it dries flat underneath some weight. So because <clears throat> my text block is gonna be green, I'm gonna use the green sheet of paper in the middle of my paper sandwich. So the strategy here is I'm gonna build up a laminated board cover. So it's gonna be three sheets of paper thick and then we're gonna glue all these together like a plywood. And then after it dries flat, we're gonna trim it down to the size we need. So to start, I'm gonna begin gluing. So this is a bigger sheet of paper. It's gonna require a bit more glue. Uh, because our covers only have to be about half the size of the sheet of paper, we have plenty of space and we'll have extra paper that's just waste. So it's low stress. So go ahead and open your glue. This is the first time you've worked with glue. I wanna make sure that your glue brushes, since they're new, um, aren't giving off too many extra hairs. It's always annoying to pick bristles out of your glue. You can see I have a few here. Um, these are not fancy, expensive glue brushes. Um, so that's going to be expected. If you ever want to upgrade glue brushes, there are plenty on the market. Um, and they come in different varieties. And I like this one. I always say it has like a little kickstand on it. It's like a Harry Potter Nimbus 2000. But for today, this glue brush is perfect. It's going to get the job done. So our job here is we're gonna apply glue to this piece of paper. And we don't have to be super worried about getting to the edges because we really only need sort of uh, a couple of pieces from the inside. If you're doing uh, a project and you really are trying to conserve paper, which generally I do, um, you would wanna be meticulous about covering the edges with glue. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue onto my brush and then I'm going to wipe a little bit of glue off of my brush. The trick to gluing truly is um, a little bit is learned skill and a little bit is just sort of figuring out what the, the proper amount is. So not too much, not too little, but just right. So I'm just gonna quickly start gluing, which I always have a hard time talking and gluing at the same time. So I'm gonna be quiet. By not gluing all the way to the edges, that's why you have scrap paper. Um, by not gluing all the way to the edges, you're leaving yourself a place to grip your paper, which is quite nice. So like I said before, um, I'm gonna make um, basically a card stock paper sandwich here. And this is gonna be my first layer. My second layer is gonna be green. 
uh, which is the color of my text block. You can make these any color you like. <laughs> Very much up to you. I like how paper gets squirrely. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting close to completing the gluing. You're looking for a very thin, even layer, full coverage. Um, you can see I have a bristle in there, which just drives me nuts. You don't want to leave that in there. The great thing about your knife is it's really good for removing brush bristles, aside from cutting paper. It's a very useful tool. Um, all right, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my green sheet of paper and I'm gonna line this up as best as I can, just sort of memorizing that I have um, about a centimeter and a half worth of border around the edge that's not glued. All right, I'm just gonna lay that down. And apply pressure. So one of the things that's really important here is um, this idea of massaging the paper together your hands are your best tools. And if you use this kind of soft, squishy part of your hand, you can really get some of the air out. Just be careful not to give yourself a paper cut. And I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna <laughs> rotate my paper around to make sure I can get the air out. So as I'm doing this, I can hear some air escaping, and that's normal, it's good. You just want to have really good contact on here. And you can do two hands if you feel comfortable. You can get all fancy with it as much as you'd like. Once this is glued, we are going to put a third layer on here, uh, which is going to be this color of paper. Um, but ideally what I like to do is, because we have this luxury of video and time, I am going to actually just place this underneath my cutting mat and I'm gonna let it dry while I do the other parts of the book. So here it goes underneath my cutting mat. You can put it in there with some newsprint if you'd like. Um, just make sure if you put it in there with anything, there isn't any glue on that newsprint. Um, you can make a newsprint sandwich. Sometimes the newsprint will help it dry a little bit faster because it absorbs some of the moisture. So I am just gonna slide that, maybe you can see it. Um, slide this underneath my cutting mat. So it's right here, it's pretty thin, it's pretty flat. It's not gonna affect any of the, the work that I'm doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and proceed and keep working on the next part of the project. So the critical thing to do now is to go wash out your glue brush. When you wash this out in the sink, just take your glue brush with some cold water and really massage it into your hand to make sure you get all of the glue out of the brush and then really squeeze it dry and get all the water out. You don't want a sopping wet brush when you go back to glue, you just want it to be humid. But you also wanna make sure that you get all of the glue out of the brush so that it doesn't dry in the bristles. Once this glue dries in the bristles, your brush is ruined. So the other thing that's important to note is that because I'm gluing, I decided to put on an apron, and that mostly comes from knowing myself. I tend to wipe my hands onto my body, onto my apron while I'm working. It's much faster because you don't wanna get glue onto your paper, and you'll see why that's important in a moment. Our next step is to measure out our smaller sheets of paper. And just so everybody knows what measurements I'm working with, this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet that I was using for the cover. And these sheets of paper are um, half of a letter size sheet of paper. They're five and a half by eight and a half inches. Now, because in, this is book arts class and we're working in metric, the thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this out in metric measurements. 
And we're gonna measure just each sheet of paper so we know where to score and fold our papers. They all need to be folded identically. And the way to get this structure to work properly is to make sure before anything happens that all of these sheets of paper have been cut with right angles into the same measurement. This piece of paper is measuring 21.7 centimeters. So let's think about that. Um, we're gonna try to keep the math uh, rather simple on this book. And usually what I do is we're gonna measure over to the 20 centimeter mark. It keeps the math nice and easy. So go ahead and put a tick mark at 20 centimeters over here. And you're also gonna put a tick mark at 10 centimeters over here. Now it's really important that you get these measurements accurate. And when you're doing the measuring, don't lean to one side or to the other side of the ruler to do the measurement. Really make sure that you're looking straight down on the ruler to get an accurate measurement. And also make sure that you have either a mechanical pencil with a nice sharp tip on or a sharpened pencil um, with a sharp tip so you have a very skinny line. And so what I'm gonna do next is do those same measurements at the top. Now I'm just putting little tick marks on here. Precision is, is important. So I'm just measuring over 10 and 20. Very simple. I'm gonna do that to each sheet of paper. Try to be as precise as possible. So if we were doing a larger um, number of pages or several books, we would use a different tool and we would set up a, a different system, something that takes slightly less uh, time than this, something more efficient, basically. There are tools on the market that help you measure and score paper. This is the most accurate way. Let's double check those measurements. And the last one. So we can explain the logic here. We're gonna have two panels and a tab or a flap, whatever you wanna call it. Let me get that last measurement again. It's not quite right. All right. Great. So our next job is we're gonna score and fold all of these sheets of paper. Again, one by one. What's important here is to make sure that the tip of your bone folder isn't sharp. If it is sharp, you can take a piece of sandpaper and you can kind of just round this out a little bit. If you don't have sandpaper on hand, you can use your knife to kind of just gently kind of stroke away at the top. Now, here's the trick to folding with a scoring and folding with a bone folder which is I'm gonna lay down my ruler near those measure marks. They're very close, but I'm gonna come in with my bone folder and I'm gonna make sure 
that when I push down with my bone folder um, and I'm holding it properly, that I'm actually scoring on the pencil marks. So you can see, hopefully, that my ruler is just slightly off from the pencil mark. My pencil mark is here and my ruler is here. It's just a tiny difference, but it's important that you're scoring on the pencil line where those score marks are and not a bone folder's width off of that mark. So you can just lightly make sure that you're on the pencil lines, and I am. And once you're there, you can go ahead with your bone folder, a couple of strokes, just to make sure you're scoring. And then go ahead, lift, and use the ruler to help you establish that fold. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And you'll get a, a hang of it, and you'll get a feel for your bone folder and what that distance is. A lot of this in bookmaking is about, especially the beginning, learning good habits and establishing um, muscle memory. So there's my fold. And these are a little bit more fun because they're flaps. This is a great trick, being able to fold just a skinny little fold. Just get in there with your bone folder and lift it up. And now what we can do is we can take our bone folder Start in the middle and push, start in the middle and pull. And just keep in mind, I'm, I'm at this, uh, I'm using this part of my bone folder, this very skinny four edge, to really get some pressure in there and really establish that fold. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this fold as well. And if you need to change the direction of these folds later, that's fine, there's no problem. Okay, so we're gonna do that to each sheet of paper. Just as you're folding these, just double check to make sure that things are lining up how they're supposed to. Again, just make sure that everything is flush at the top and the bottom.
And our last one. So each of these is now folded in the exact same way with our flaps over here and the fold, which is going to be in the middle of the book. We're going to set these aside because we're going to work on our covers again. see that our newsprint came out it's a little wrinkly um, that's normal because it's moisture and you can see there's a little bit of warp happening on this paper and so that just tells me that it's still wet um, and it could use a little bit more drying time okay so what we can do is we can place this back under the board and we can change out the newsprints and we'll let it dry a little bit longer. I'm going to finish gluing up my covers now. So I have my um, laminated sheets of paper here. And just to, re to remind you, we have glue sort of about around here in this section. And what's important to remember now is I wanted this green sheet in the middle of my lamination, which means I'm going to put glue on it right now. So I'm going to start with my laminated sheets, so my red and my green. And I'm gonna put just some scrap paper underneath in case. And I'm gonna have on hand the piece of paper that I'm gonna glue to the top of this. So just like before, we're gonna get um, kind of a nice amount of coverage in this area. And um, then I'm just gonna place the sheet on top, massage it down and let it dry. And this time when you let it dry, let it dry until it's flat, as flat as possible and as long as possible. So we'll start with some glue. You just want a nice thin, even layer of glue. You can start from the middle and work out in a spiral. You can be more systematic about it. Um, whatever seems to make the most sense to you is fine. You just want to make sure that you have even a thin, even amount of glue and that you're working somewhat fast because um, you don't want this to start drying because then you have all this glue kind of build up in between and it's not going to help anything. <laughs> so again, we want to glue to about the same distances that we glued previously. If you don't remember, it was about a half inch from each edge. Um, a brass rule from each edge or about a centimeter from each edge. Centimeter and a half. And again, it's squirrely, wants to get away. This glue makes uh, a fair amount of resistance with your brush. <laughs> and you can always rotate this piece of paper if you feel like you're gonna have better luck, you know, only gluing towards the right direction. That's fine, completely legal. You 
you just want to make sure that you're working somewhat quickly because this is starting to dry and I wouldn't say I'm in a particularly dry environment. Um, this will dry faster in drier climates. Alright, and then just make sure there's no bristles in there. I do see there's a little something in here. I don't know what that is. Something naughty and there's something over here as well. So we're going to get those guys out of there. And I'm going to work fast at this point because things are starting to set up. And you don't have to line up these edges perfectly because we're going to trim this later. So don't panic too hard about that. Just make sure you have a good attachment here. So just using part of my hand, work through this. If it helps you to stand up to apply pressure, please do that. Probably would help me. <laughs> Again, if you used your bone folder to do this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna burnish the paper. And you might not love what that looks like because it's gonna look strange. Okay, we're gonna place this, place this back underneath a flat surface and let it dry completely. When it's done drying, it should be flat. We want it to dry flat, otherwise it's gonna start curling. You'll see what it's already starting to do. Um, and then you also want this to be, if you hold this up to your cheek, that it won't feel um, very cool. If it still feels cool, it means it's still damp and you should let it dry longer. And this will take quite a while to dry. I would give it a good solid 30 minutes, at least. So we're gonna begin um, gluing together the body of the book, the actual accordion part. And um, we're gonna start by changing this fold on all of the parts. So we're just reversing that fold, not a big deal. And again, we're just reversing this fold So everything is identical. So we have a bunch of um, folded folios now with the little flaps on them. And we're gonna lay this out so you can see, you can begin to see how we're gonna glue together this book structure. And it's important to see this because um, it's easy to get lost when you're gluing this structure together, especially for the first time. And especially because we don't have particular content in this book. It would be much more obvious if we had a sequence to follow and imagery on the pages because we would know what's where and if it's upside down. <laughs> okay, so this is basically how our book structure goes and I like to leave it um, set up in front of me on my workstation, especially when I'm teaching the structure so that at any moment if I forget where I am in the structure, it's easy. I have a visual representation of how the structure is going to go. So what's important to understand about the structure is that you have this nice V fold and then you have the peak here of the mountain and this flap is going to glue behind the next sheet in line. And it's important that that flap is always behind um, because if you have alternating flaps where some are in front and some are in back, it looks sloppy but it can also compromise sort of the, um, the actual measurements in the structure and it can make something kind of start leaning. It's basically gonna look sloppy, and that's sort of the big takeaway from it. Um, 
So just remember to keep those flaps all on the same side. All right, how do you do that? So we're gonna start by gluing two of these folios together. And when we glue them, we're always gonna glue in pairs. And you'll see this as we work through our book. Next we'll do this pair, and then next we'll do that pair. And when I'm teaching this, and you can do this too, it's very helpful. Um, I like to remind myself where the glue is gonna go. The glue is gonna go on this tab and only on this tab. And that tab is then gonna connect to the back side, right here, of this sheet of paper. Now I do that kind of light because I don't want it to show through. This isn't gonna be seen and neither is this because they're gonna be laying next to each other. So what's the best way to glue these two things together? I'm gonna slide these folios out of the way just a little bit, just in the same order so I remember how they go. You're gonna get a couple of sheets of newsprint. Now this is when the smaller sheets of newsprint are quite handy. So just remember, I'm not shifting anything. This is really how it's gonna go. And you wanna get a newspaper or a newsprint underneath um, whatever you're gonna glue. And you need another newsprint over here because this is gonna act sort of as a barrier or a stencil so that you're only gonna get glue on this little flap. You're not gonna get glue on the good part that's gonna be seen because it'll just be ugly. So we're gonna glue here very gently. Um, this is when your half inch brush is much more um, appropriate, but I'm gonna do this with my monster one inch brush here and it's gonna be fine. And again, if you have any kind of bristles that are being naughty and poking out, feel free to just kind of pluck them out or even get out your scissors and give it a little haircut. So I have no glue on my brush yet, but um, I have a hard time talking and gluing at the same time. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here. I'm gonna get full coverage on that flap, a very thin layer. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take out this because it's probably gonna have glue on it. I'm gonna take out this because it's probably also gonna have glue on it. I'm gonna have my ruler here to help me and this is really only helping me as a straight edge and not at all as a measurement. And I'm gonna line up this whole folio just butt onto the ruler. And I'm gonna make sure that my pencil line that's on this sheet is going to land right on top of that flap. And you have this moment where you can kind of wiggle things. And that moment is gonna be used to make sure that this is also aligned on the base of this ruler. And if everything is cut square, what you'll see on this fold here, where this the bump of this fold is and where the foredge of this paper meets up, is that it should be flush. It shouldn't be kind of skewed to one side or the other. Um, if it is, it means you've done a, a bad job of cutting. <laughs> and it's something that you really need to work on. The number one frustration I find um, with students and creating accordion books especially is just making sure that your paper is cut at a 90 degree angle is incredibly critical. And making sure, of course, that your paper is all the same size, but that's a little bit harder to um, mess up when you have a paper cutter to use. All right. So we're gonna do this. Let me get this back into formation here. Um, we're gonna live glue this now. So I'm gonna slide my ruler back out of frame, out of my work area. And if you need larger scrap paper to do this because you're first starting and you're kind of like wild at gluing, that's fine. There's no rule about this. Um, you can use a bigger sheet of paper if you feel more comfortable with that. I'm gonna use a small one so you can see what that looks like. And sometimes I turn it diagonally because it just gives me more area to work with. So just make sure that this is a nice, sharp edge here. Um, sometimes if you've torn newsprint, that soft torn edge is not enough to keep this lovely. So let me get my glue back out. You wanna make sure that your brush 
isn't wet. So I'm really gonna just double check here <clears throat> to make sure my brush is just damp. It's just damp. Um, and I'm not gonna dunk my whole brush into the glue. I'm really just gonna get a little bit of glue on the tip, you'll see. And I'm going to wipe off a lot of that. So I'm gonna get full coverage here just on the tip of the glue brush. And I'm wiping off a lot of that excess. Uh, you can always come back for more, right? So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna see what my coverage looks like and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna work my glue brush away from the stencil. I'm not gonna push towards that stencil. And I'm gonna keep the glue off my cutting mat because you just don't want glue in your cutting mat ever. You wanna keep your cutting mats clean because this glue won't come off. Likewise, if you get this on your clothes, it doesn't come off. So I have full coverage and you just wanna make sure, especially at the edges and at that fold, that you have glue covering. It's not juicy at all. You do have to work kind of quick because it will dry on you. And when you pull these sheets of scrap paper away, you wanna make sure that there's no glue on your fingers and you don't get glue from the scrap paper onto um, your good book. So again, I'm doing just what I said I was gonna do. I'm lining up this piece of paper over here, lining up this piece of paper over here, and here's like the wiggle moment. And my paper could be more square, but I cut these rather quickly for you guys. <laughs> Um, and once you get that attached, use your fingers. So again, that soft, squishy part of your hand is a great tool. You can just rub that on there. Now, if you've put too much glue onto this book structure, you'll know at this point because it's gonna start oozing out. So you don't want your glue to ooze out of your folds. And if it doesn't ooze out of that one, it can ooze out of this one. You don't want any ooze. If you do get glue onto your cutting mat, just wipe it up immediately with the paper towel. If you get glue onto your hands because it oozes out here, this is what it's great to have on an apron because you can just kind of wipe it onto your apron and then you have a clean hand to work with. So you will get glue on your fingers while doing this. I have some on here. Just try to keep your fingers clear of glue. All right, so once we have this glued, which we do, we're just gonna place this under our cutting mat and we're gonna let it dry. And we're just gonna work through the rest of our stack in the exact same way. So you can see my glue is gonna go here and my glue is gonna go over here on this side, just like we did before. So I'm gonna move that one over. I'm gonna get some new scrap paper. And don't be stingy about the scrap paper, it's scrap paper. Use as much as you need to use um, and sometimes when I'm working and I have to just get it out of the way quickly, I will literally just throw this on the floor so it doesn't get stuck to, um, you know, other important things. You can pick it up later. It's fine. Okay, I'm prepared to put that sheet down. So get a little bit of glue onto my brush. Let me move this slightly closer so it's a little less awkward for me. So just remember, just don't brush towards the stencil. You can kind of brush vertically slightly away diagonal if you want to change the angle because that feels like it's covering better with this brush. That's fine. That's fine. Again, full coverage, no juice on here. Get rid of your scrap. Chuck it on the floor if you have to. And as you go to glue, just make sure that you're not flopping your good book down on your glue brush or into your glue itself. Um, glue can be very naughty. So you just have to watch out, watch out for it. So 
So bookbinding becomes very, um, it becomes quite repetitive, which is one of the things I like about it. It's meticulous as well. Again, use that nice part of your hand, soft part. It does a good job of getting that fold on there. You could use your bone folder on this, but I find sometimes if you do that, it can burnish the paper and it leaves this weird little shiny stripe on there, which um, I don't always love and it shows up more on some paper than others. All right, so again, I'm gonna put that underneath my mat. I'm looking at this sheet and I see I have just a slight um, flaw up here on my tab and that's from cutting my paper incorrectly. Um, or just it's slightly off. I'm not gonna panic about this. I'm just gonna put it away and let it dry. And I can fix it later. And I'm gonna glue my last pair. So again, my glue is gonna go here. And my glue is going to go right there on that flap. Line up my stencil just so it's covering up the fold. Get a little bit of glue. Now, if you have too much glue, which looks like that could be slightly too much glue, um, just continue your stroke onto your newsprint. And that'll just, you know, it takes some of the glue off of your brush and off of the flap. You just don't want, you just want to avoid um, just having too much glue on this flap. So you can do this and then you can come back over the flap and remove a little bit more. You can use this side too, it's fine. All right, you just wanna be careful if your underneath scrap moves just like that. If it does, just get rid of it. You can replace it. Conveniently, we're done gluing in that moment. Otherwise, I just slide a new sheet under there. Get rid of that guy. And I can see somehow I got glue over here. Don't panic. Um, this isn't a fancy book right now. This is just a model. So just wipe that up as best you can. I don't know where it came from. It may have dripped. You guys can play that in slow-mo and let me know later. Again, I'm going to lay this down using my ruler so that the bottom is lined up. And a lot of this is really just establishing this very strange refined motor skill. Um, I've been binding books for quite a while and teaching this. Um, also for quite a while. So you'll notice my hands do some weird things. Um, that's normal. It, it does take a little bit of time for your hands to get used to these motions. Uh, especially I feel like the further we go into the future, we're so used to using our phones to do things. It's different muscle memories. Okay, so this is also ready to dry. We're gonna put it underneath our mat. Now, in the ideal planet, we would let these dry until they're completely dry, but that's not like a thing that's happening. So we're going to do what they do on the cooking shows. All right. So at this point, you can fold up your structure again. and it's starting to look more like a book, okay? And we have this third one under here, which is fine, it's drying. What we're gonna do now is that we're gonna attach, again, we're gonna glue in pairs. So this pair, we're gonna glue to this pair. Now, I know we have another pair under here. When you have an odd number like that, at the end, what you're gonna do is just attach it to this after it's done drying. So right now, our goal, and this is nothing to, too new to us. We're going to put glue there and we're going to put glue here. Now here's what you need to make sure. Please just double check that there are no tabs on this side. All of the tabs are glued underneath. Okay. 
And the other thing to note is that all the tabs are pointing towards the, the one side. Gluing this is really similar. And you'll see, <laughs> we have our tab and our stencil. And some gluing. Now I just want to remind everybody because I know this is a video. If you stop at any point or are interrupted during your binding and you have glue on your brush, make sure you clean off your brush. The glue will dry fairly quickly and once that glue is dried on there it's impossible. Your brush is ruined. I mean it's impossible to get it off. You could soak it all night long and it's not going to come off. All right, so there is our glue on our flap. I'm gonna get rid of this, which has some bristles on it. I'm gonna get rid of that. I didn't get glue on anything else. My hands aren't gluey. Again, I'm just lining up the base. You're like, yeah, I have extra material on either side now. I think the only thing you need to worry about is that your extra material isn't falling into your glue brush or your glue pot or anything it shouldn't be touching. All right, lining up the base again, same story. There's that moment for wiggle where you can make those fine, fine, fine adjustments. I'm gonna make that attachment here, rub it with my hand. There's no glue oozing out. And I'm gonna put this underneath my cutting mat again and let it dry. Now that these are dry, we're going to set them back up again. And if you notice when you fold these up, they're really kind of crooked. Don't panic. There is a way to kind of fudge that crookedness. So I'm lining it up over here. and I'm making it fold back into the place where it's supposed to go. I don't know why paper does that, but sometimes it just, it's tricky. And it'll be fine. So again, we're gonna set this back up. Just like we had it originally and Again, just double check to make sure all of your flaps are on the back side and facing the same direction. My glue is gonna go here on this flap and my glue is gonna go, it's gonna end up touching, that flap is gonna glue down to that space. So because this is our last um, gluing and we're joining together this whole book, we have our two pairs over here and then our oddball pair over here. We're just gonna join them together even though it's not um, an even amount on each, either side. This way of working in pairs is very helpful in order to keep your book um, squared up and not accidentally leaning towards one side or the other. <laughs> so you want to make sure again full coverage I do have a bristle in there 
Again, your knife is a great tool to get rid of that and wipe that on my apron. And I'm gonna try to take out that glue mark that I just made. And hopefully I didn't just leave another bristle in there. No, we're good. All right, I'm gonna get rid of my scrap. Get rid of my scrap. Get my ruler back over here. And line this up, just double checking. Again, make sure your tails, the rest of these um, accordions aren't landing in glue or, you know, in your sandwich that's maybe next to you. I don't know what's next to you. <laughs> um, again, so I can use my bone folder on there, but your hand is the best tool. And there's no glue coming out. You're going to put this back under your mat and you're going to let it dry. So while this is drying, we can work on the covers. And I also want to mention about putting this under the mat, it's getting quite long. So really the only place that we really need to put under the mat at this point is the part that we just glued. That's what needs to dry flat. And if that's just too awkward for you, um, and it's not quite a good situation, you can always put this or that section underneath just a heavy book or heavy flat object. Any of those things will work. I'm gonna peel my accordion book out from underneath my cutting mat. Now let it dry. I'm gonna to drop my ruler on the floor too. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and accordion everything up and just sort of look at it and make sure it's doing okay and that it came out okay. pretty good. Um, the last thing that we're going to do, I'm going to fuss with this in a moment, but the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to trim off this um, tab. So you can take your ruler and you can just use the bulk of that fold as your, your guide for where to place your ruler. And make sure you have a sharp blade for this. I've been gluing loads of, um, pulling bristles off of here with my knife. And I'm gonna put this in a sharps container. Which happily, I keep right next to my workstation. So again, line up your ruler with that fold and then just make a nice clean cut. And if you have to go two strokes, that's fine. But you just need to take off that extra flap because it doesn't serve any purpose. It's not attaching to anything. So now we have this great little accordion book and you can fuss with this a little bit because you'll see that maybe not all of your folds are where you want them to be. When you first start doing this, sometimes you end up with some really wacky, uneven folds. Again, I just want to remind you um, ways to prevent that sort of uneven folding is really make sure that your paper is cut square and precise all to the same size. So 90 degree angle corners and everything really identical in size. The second thing is make sure that you're measuring accurately. Um, if those measurements are inaccurate, you're going to see that reflected in your accordion. And the third thing is when you go to fold, just make sure that you're folding on the pencil lines and not just slightly off the pencil lines due to the thickness of your bone folder. So when you get to this point, if you do have stuff that's really off, it's hard to fix. Um, but if you have things that are just sort of, sort of slightly tweaked, you kind of can go back in and do a little bit of massaging, but hopefully you don't have to do too much of that um, at all, really. And you can see sometimes, you know, I have this fold that's just kind of askew, I, I think you can see that. I'm exaggerating it right now, um, so you can. But I am just gonna come down here and gently align this fold to the fold underneath, and I can just align those tick marks. And if I'm sort of concerned about that, I can check the other parts as well. And I get this nice little kind of bulge right here that's off. 
And what I like to do is give this death grip and kind of try to trick this fold into behaving itself a little bit better. And hopefully that fixed it. And it did. So sometimes you can cheat and fuss a little things like that. Anything that's really big is much more difficult to fix at this point. And it really is something that should have been addressed in the paper cutting portion of, uh, and the measuring portion of the binding. So here's another one that's just off, just by a tiny bit. I think this is the one I tried to fold before. Sometimes if you can't get it on that side, you can give it a little aggressive fold from the other side. Now, if you've done this correctly, you end up with this very beautiful book and all of the tabs are on the other side. So there's my tab. Those are all my tabs. Okay. So that is your, the body, at least the text block of your accordion with tabs or flaps. And our next step is going to be to cut down the covers and attach them to this structure. So in order to do that, we need to know the measurement of our page. So we're gonna very carefully go in here and we're gonna measure the dimensions of our book. And we already know this, and I'm gonna just draw this right on here. This is 10 centimeters wide, and you don't have to draw this on here. And this height is the one that we don't know because we haven't measured this yet. This is, sorry, my ruler is a little squirrely, 13, Point nine, and I'm gonna double check to make sure that that's the same measurement down here. I don't always trust my vision. 13.9 <laughs> centimeters, it's the same on either side. So we have some a few options with covers. Usually what I like to do is, for this at least style of book, is just cut them flush. So we're gonna cut two pieces of the cover to those dimensions of 13.9 by 10 centimeters. Just make sure that when you go and you cut this, and I'm gonna talk about this in a moment, um, that your covers are dry. That's one of the most critical parts of this. And that as you cut this, um, you're cutting a square angle. And we'll talk about how to do that. Okay, now that our covers are dry, I'm gonna show you two different ways um, of how to make the covers. Either way, we just have to keep in mind that our glue really only covers about that much, so we're really only working with this material in the middle. But our first step, very simple, we're just gonna cut this sheet of paper in half, and you can measure this this sheet of paper is uh, 11 inches, um, so you can just cut it in a half at five and a half, or you can do the metric, it's about 14 centimeters. The important part here is that this is dry and that you have a fresh, sharp blade. Now, I've only made one cut with this blade um, since changing the blade, and uh, I am gonna stand up to do this so I get a nice, clean cut, and this might take you a few strokes to get through the material. Now you want um, this to be dry and you want a fresh blade because otherwise what's gonna happen is very likely this paper is just gonna kind of um, crumble and it's not gonna give you a nice clean cut. You wanna be able to see the layers in your paper. So I'm gonna give this an initial stroke and I'm gonna keep going until I get all the way through. Now I'm not quite through, got excited. Um, and now this edge, you have this nice little three layer sandwich. Um, we'll see if the camera can pick that up. It's subtle. It's a nice little three layer sandwich. 
Um, we're going to use this as our um, one example, and this is going to be our other example. We just have to keep in mind this is the cut edge, and you'll be able to figure that out because you can see how uneven the other edges are. So method one for getting um, our covers. I'm just going to remind you that our measurements are 13.9 by 10 cents centimeters and the other thing that I want to mention is that on hand I have a couple of um, nice thick heavy books and those are going to be very helpful as weights later um, they're just going to help kind of flatten everything together you need to dry this book underneath weight um, you need to keep this this everything all these parts underneath weight until they're dry and especially when they're assembled until they're dry otherwise I mean you can see this paper still wants to curve. It's just its nature. So if this doesn't dry underneath weight, your book is gonna be curved and it's gonna look very strange. So I'm gonna put one of these to the side and I'm gonna focus on this one. So our job is to cut um, square things. So we wanna make sure that we're cutting a square angle. Now on your cutting mat, you can use that right angle, of course. That's uh, a little bit of a, <clears throat> a crude way to accomplish our goals. But we also have, um, you know, there's tools that exist in the world that can help you cut square angles. So you can use a triangle if you have one. And um, our goal here is that we're cutting, um, what are our dimensions again? 10 centimeters over and 13.9 centimeters up. Now we could cut like this, but it cuts us, it makes us very close to the edge of our paper. So I'm gonna have us cut like this today. Ideally, however, um, your grain direction of your paper, you can see that it's curving like this. Your grain direction would be parallel to the spine. So we would actually want to glue in this direction. But we're making a small exception here because <laughs> we're trying to conserve some of this paper. All right, so we can cut our first measurement, which is 10 centimeters. I'm gonna just measure over from this edge and accuracy is critical here. And if you're in, you know, having a hard time seeing the beginning of your ruler, just go over to a, a different point on your ruler. So measure twice, cut once. We don't have to glue this again. It took us forever to let this dry. So we're measuring that twice. It's 10 centimeters. I am again gonna stand up to cut this. And again, you wanna make sure that your blade is still fresh. And you wouldn't wanna cut this if your paper is damp. So I'm trying to get those tick marks in here. A little bit hard to do with the camera in the way. Excuse my head. <laughs> um, again, I'm gonna stand up to make this cut. I'm keeping my knife not at a tip, either direction. It's perpendicular to my cutting mat. And again, I'm gonna keep um, making that slice in the same spot without moving my ruler until I get my uh, off cut. Okay, so that was our 10 centimeters. And you can kind of see how it's gonna sit on our book. It's quite nice. Uh, we'll decide at some point what, what end is out. And now we're gonna do our right angles. So the first right angle, we just wanna come in enough and we can be very precise and we can center this on here, um, but we don't have to do that. So, I mean, you can guess here, we're cutting about 14 centimeters, 13.9 and we've got about 22. So you can figure out the difference there and you can just you know move in accordingly. But sometimes what I like to do, because I am a visual person, is there's about my 14 centimeters, so it's gonna look sort of like that. So um, quickly I can say, we can come in about four centimeters from each side and we'll be quite safe. Now, we just have to remember I'm gonna put a little tick mark on here. But we just have to remember, we have to cut off enough 
because this area isn't fully glued. So we need to remember that and we have to trim that off. The other thing we need to remember is we can't just measure from this edge because this edge isn't square necessarily. That might not be a right angle. So there's two ways you can do this. You can use your cutting mat, like I mentioned before, and you can line up this freshly cut um, side with that side and you can connect your ruler like so. And you can see our tick mark here. And then you can use this grid system on the cutting mat. Just being very precise is, is a little tricky with this. Um, but you can make this cut um, using this method if you don't have a triangle on hand. If you do have a triangle on hand, you can still use the mat to kind of help you set up everything. But then you just want to double check to make sure that you actually are cutting square. And sometimes what I like to do is um, use tools on hand to make my life easier. And I have this brass rule, so I can line the brass rule up with the edge of the paper. It's a little bit taller than the paper. And then I can put my fancy little triangle down on here. Um, I can use my ruler on here as well. My ruler I don't think is thick enough to occupy this and catch on the triangle. So brass is sort of a good, good friend here. Um, and I can either, either cut using my triangle, but I actually prefer cutting and using my ruler because it seems like a little bit better of a material. So I'm all square. And again, I'm gonna make that cut. Okay, that's some scrap. So now I can just measure over from here to here and be accurate in my measuring. And I should have a square sheet of paper. So we are measuring over, I like to remind myself, 13.9 from this side. That's just that freshly cut edge. And I'm gonna measure up here as well. Okay, again, I'm gonna stand up and cut to trim. really nice um, flush covers and I think what I'm gonna do is glue them on like this the red is a little bit too bright for my liking um, and I'm gonna glue them with the, the blue side out so I just need to cut my other cover and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on um, my paper cutter and we're gonna see if there's a difference there shouldn't be too much of a difference there you can certainly cut your second sheet by hand. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so I am happy and sad to report that actually cutting by hand was more accurate um, and gave me a better result and that has to do with the sharpness of the paper cutter. Um, you get a much nicer, sharper, cleaner edge with using your own sharp blade on your knife. So our step here is we're gonna glue the cover to the book and you can decide what's gonna be the front cover and what's going to be the back cover. Um, I'm gonna put the blue to the outside. That's my plan. And I'm gonna start by placing a piece of scrap paper just inside this first fold. And I'm gonna place another piece of, of scrap paper and I can put a smaller one in there um, behind that fold as well. So what that does is um, I'm protecting this page below and I'm protecting the rest of the text block from any sort of stray gluing that may occur. Um, again, I'm gonna talk through this before I actually do it to show you because I'm terrible at talking and gluing at the same time. Um, I'm gonna place my glue on the cover. Again, I'm gonna work 
from here out. I'm not gonna stroke back in from the edges because it's very easy to get glue on the underside here and you don't want that. Um, so really I'm gonna work my way outwards from the center. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to place my cover, I'm gonna kind of dive bomb it right on top of um, the area where I've just glued. And I'm gonna press it down and um, hopefully it's gonna attach in the right spot and it's gonna look perfect. Um, what you're looking for is that it should be flush on all the sides with the text block underneath. We'll see how, how accurate I can be. This part is a little stressful, um, so just try to be cool. <laughs> So again, you want the Goldilocks amount of glue. You wanna make sure that your brush is clean um, and that it isn't too wet. And you can see I have a bristle in my glue. Lovely. And this part's always fun because you have to put your fingers in the glue, but then the trick is to not get glue on anything that shouldn't have glue in it. <laughs> I usually use my fingernails to do this, and you'll see probably in an indent of my fingernail in a second. There they are. So just like before, you wanna make sure that you get the edges especially well, and if you need to pick out any glue bristles, this knife is a great tool for doing that. So working quickly, I'm gonna carefully lift off the lid and take out that scrap uh, newsprint that's in there. And then I'm gonna place my cover, I'm just gonna dive bomb it on top of, and I see another bristle over here, on top of my text block. And there's a moment, again, where you can wiggle. So I'm just gonna kind of wiggle in there. And there's a few ways to do this. So I'm gonna show you a slightly different way on the other side. Sometimes one makes more sense than the other and works better. So I'm tacking that down now, it looks pretty good. You can flip it over here and you can see this little bit of red poking out. Maybe I can wiggle that over. And then once I'm like, yeah, that's in the right spot. Again, you're gonna take the soft part of your hand and you're just gonna work. And sometimes glue, will be oozing out. So just make sure if you do get any glue on your hand that you get it off of your hand before you touch the good part of your book again. Lovely. Now I'm gonna attempt to do the same thing to the other side. Again, newsprint underneath. That newsprint's a little defective. Get a different one. Oh, I'm gonna put a bigger newsprint on top. Goldilocks amount of glue. What I like to do beforehand is just dry fit this and make sure that everything's gonna line up okay. It looks all right. So I'm just gonna kind of flop this back over here. It's always easier to check that when there's no glue on it. So that bristle's probably gonna come off in my book. There it is. I'm 
I put a whole finger in the glue this time. I don't know why. I usually manage just a fingernail. <laughs> Um, so now I have a little extra glue on my fingers I got to deal with. Um, I want to make sure I get these edges really well. They look sort of naked. Again, I've got a bristle over here. That one's kind of easy to get off. And I've got one over here that's going to be mischievous. I'm going to get rid of that. Make sure my fingers don't have glue on them. And I'm going to carefully lift this up and get my scrap paper out of here. And you can see this wants to curl. That's what it does. Um, the other way you can do this is start at the fore edge and work your way backwards. So I'm gonna to try to show you that. Um, it seems a little bit squirrely right now because it's so curled. But basically what I'm doing is I'm gently tacking the cover onto the edge, the fore edge of this paper, and I'm gonna rotate this. You just wanna make sure you don't have any glue on your fingers when you do this. Um, kind of just wiggling this on now. All right, so I've made the full commitment. Again, um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna rotate this around because I can only do things in one direction for some reason. <clears throat> Again, soft part of my hand, massaging on the cover. And because this book doesn't have any content in it, it's a little bit hard to say what's the front cover and what's the back cover. And that's fine. <laughs> we'll figure that out in a second. Okay. So at this point, there's a couple things to do. Um, you don't want to leave this out too long. So don't, don't spend too long admiring your, your great work here. Um, your job right now is really to get this underneath some weight and to wash out your glue brush. Those are your two main priorities at this point. You are going to leave this under weight as long as you can possibly stand, um, hopefully overnight if you can. You really want this to dry out. If you take it out too soon, it is going to curl and get a little bit warpy in weird ways and you'll be very sad because you just spent all this time making it. So before I put this under weight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something to indicate the front cover and that could be, you know, just putting a little mark on there, um, putting something on there. I'm trying to think what's in my view. piece of decorative paper with some um, sticker backing on it. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and just cut a little shape. So that those edges are a little sharper. And because this is a sticker, I'm just going to peel and stick. So that's something very simple you can do to put the front cover on. Do I prefer one side to the other? Not particularly. <laughs> so I am going to place this onto my front cover, which makes it different than my back cover. I'm give it a little bit of a press with my bone folder. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sandwich this between some newsprints. I'll show this to you on the screen. I am going to place my book on top of the newsprint, put another newsprint on top of that. And this is when these heavy books come in very handy. And if I have anything else heavy around, a water bottle, for example, is always a good one. It's nice and hefty. You can place more weight on top of this. I'm just gonna put another book on here. Um, books make great book weights. And I'm going to go wash out my glue brush and I'm going to pick up everything because um, this book is done. Thank you.